Microphone check. One, two, three. Cheddar cheese in the place to be. Silver price report coming at you, bringing you the daily price of real physical silver. Big shout out to Phantomator. Big shout out to Jason out there. Thanks for watching. Things are moving very, very fast. There are some, it's some stuff happening out here. You know, when I'm out here in my daily life, well, I, I was going to say everything seems normal, but it doesn't. Actually, I just talked to somebody the other day because um, they shop at a store that I don't shop at. And I asked them, you know, if they noticed anything different. And they did say that uh, shelves are a little bit more, a little bare. You know, maybe, maybe it's one of those things. Maybe the problems that are out there are one of those things that everybody recognizes that but we just don't talk about. Or maybe people think things are going to go back normal anyway. When I'm out here, things seem relatively normal, but as you guys know, that follow all this stuff, there's some rumblings below the surface. We're gonna get into get into some of that today, but first, we gotta do this daily price. This is for March 8th, 2022, priced in US dollars. American Silver Eagles, $39.35. Now keep in mind, this is the estimated average. When I took prices last night, um, I had at least two of the dealers, one JM Bullion and one at Atmex, uh, actually in Provident Metals as well. Um, the nominal price, uh, even at 3 p.m., the nominal price touched over 40 bucks. So that, them Eagles are getting expensive as hell. Uh, Canadian Maple Leaf, $33.38. Austrian Philharmonic, $32.22. Private Mint. $29.93. Once again, um, I got on here as of 3 p.m. I got two dealers that had um, private rounds uh, under $30. Uh, your window is, is pretty much gone. Uh, let, maybe if you're buying $500 or more, you can get it under $30. Uh, but yeah, I haven't taken prices today, but like this might it's probably your last week if not the last day so if you're again like i said yesterday if you're thinking about pulling the trigger you might want to do that average price 33 dollars 86 cents spot price 26 dollars 48 cents premium seven dollars 38 cents now i forgot to mention this before um before I got into the prices, one of the things that's going to be affecting the price today, making it seem maybe a little higher than maybe what it ought to, um, Canadian Maple Leafs were out. Let's see. We had four of the seven online dealers uh, at about, I took prices at about 5 a.m. yesterday. That was the first prices. Uh, as of 5 a.m. yesterday, uh, those four dealers were completely out of Canadian Maple Leafs. Now, they did restock. Uh, with Atmex being out um, at 3 p.m. I don't know if Atmex is restocked. So those four dealers being out, uh, and when I say out, they were out of the 2022 Canadian Maple Leafs. They had the other ones. Uh, but when it comes to the sovereign mints, the government mints, I only track the current year uh, because sometimes the the older coins get a, a collector's premium, and that's not, that's not what I'm looking at. I, I'm interested in essentially the monetary price of um of silver because the physical gold and bar market uh is the monetary demand for silver so that's going to affect the price a little bit here and i had to say that to preface this daily change because check this out the average price is up 98 cents today now that could be due to the fact that i don't have the 2022's canadian maple leafs in there uh, but what didn't affect the, any of that had anything to do was the spot price going up 68 cents today, premium up 26 cents for the day. Um, yeah, dude, uh, I, f I follow Michael Sayer on Twitter. Uh, he he tracks Atmex sales. Um, he's he's claiming that Atmex sales are going through the roof. I was listening to Wall Street Silver today. Uh, their YouTube. Um, and Jim Lewis, who's one of the hosts on there, mentioned that he is calling people around, calling uh, different dealers 
uh, seeing what their inventory is and everybody is reporting that they are extremely, extremely swamped. Um, we might be looking at the next wave of silver squeeze here. Um, going down. Now we're going to see, we're going to see what happens to this average and things, uh, since some supply came in. Uh, but like I said, these prices, they're dude. I mean, these averages, the, the increases on these averages, uh, in the spot, like these daily changes, the increases on these daily changes, we're in the tens of cents. This average drop, price jump, 98 cents. I don't think we've seen that since freaking uh, Silver Squeeze last year. I don't think we've seen a, a gain in the spot price like this since then either. We're in the tens of cents. If you guys that have been following this show for a while, you know when these spot price things go up, it's always like two cents, one cents, three cents, maybe, maybe 10 cents, maybe 10 cents. What have we been seeing lately? 20 cents, 30 cents, 70 cents increase on these things uh so things are moving Th things are moving um spot chart here nominal price at midnight 26 dollars 35 cents you can see we touched 27 very very briefly during the new york hours there uh, looks like a little bit of a sell-off here in the early morning hours as i record this um but let's get into one more thing this is not the end I said we got a we got a big topic. I said yesterday we're going to talk about uh, shadow banking and commodities. We're going to do just that. I'm going to do a different format. I'm going to do this tab format. It's just a lot easier for me to talk about it this way than um, doing the slideshow. So let's start with a, a brief background. I think we, I talked about this a little bit last year. I'm not sure. I talk about so much crap. I freaking lose track of it all. Uh, I'll be losing track of my predictions and stuff. Man, I look sometimes I have an idea and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Last week I said this. Maybe I shouldn't be changing my mind so quick. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we're talking about shadow banking a little bit of commodities. So what is shadow banking? Brief definition here. This is from Investopedia. Just so you guys know, it's, I, I'm just not some... I, well, I am a dude just on the freaking internet. But I ain't just making this crap up, pulling it out of my ass. Um, what is the shadow banking system? The shadow banking system is a group of financial intermediaries which facilitate the creation of credit across the global financial system. You can think of them as basically middlemen that exist between the lender and the borrower. Between the lender and the borrower, you have what basically, we'll just say insurance companies um, that are helping again to facilitate um, these loans. You can find a paper at the Federal Reserve I'll try to find it. Look, look in the description below. It might be there. Uh, depends if I find it while poking around. Um, it's by Zoltan Pulsar, who we'll be talking about here in a brief second. Zoltan Pulsar used to work for the Fed, wrote uh, a paper on shadow banking. Easy to read. It's really, really easy to read. Uh, the diagram, though, is extremely hard to follow because he maps it out. Uh, but one of the things he mentions is there's, I want to say about at least six other entities uh, that serve as these middlemen uh, between the lender and the borrower. And there's a good chance that some of these entities, some of these insurance companies have rehypothecated the collateral. What is rehypothecation? Rehypothecation is a practice whereby banks and brokers use for their own purpose assets that have been posted as collateral by their clients. So something like I put up silver as collateral, get a loan, uh, then the bank uh, will take that silver and use it for whatever financial purposes they need to use it for. So we have basically right there two, we have one pile of assets um, and two people using the same thing. It's, it's essentially a fractional system. That's what it sounds like to me. There's a great video by George Gammon on this topic of, um, of uh, rehypothecation and shadow banking. I think it's called In the Shadows. I'm going to look look in the description below. I'm going to try to find that too and put it in the a link in the description. Um, but it, to me, it sounds like more basically a roundabout method of credit expansion. It sounds essentially like fractional reserve banking that happens outside of the traditional banking system that's what it sounds like to me so now that we've laid out that little bit of groundwork let me turn to the zero hedge article here by zoltan pulsar the guy who wrote the book uh, about shadow banking basically articles called pulsar we could be looking at the early stages of a classic liquidity crisis uh this will also be in the description below you guys can go through read the full article article yourself i only want to focus on two different parts 
this part right here uh, my bad I got something in my eye but how is he absolutely right if the funding squeeze he predicted did not materialize well as Zoltan explains in the bulk of his note what is happening right now is something that nobody really understands and what is yet to happen may be a combination of the worst parts of the 2008 2018 and 2020 crises as a result of one thing the collapse of commodity-based collateral something china understands very well after it learned on more than one occasion that as thousands of tons of its commodity stockpile especially copper and aluminum had been rehypothecated used as collateral repeatedly now we know what's going on uh, because of this little part here um Pozar points to Glencore's iconic if criminal founder whose Mark Rich's legacy in the annals of global finance was to introduce the concept of leverage and borrowed money into commodity trading. It's simple. A bank lends you the money to lease ships and buy commodities to deliver them sometime in some place in the future at a locked in price via short futures. So it sounds, I, 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 I'm sus suspecting that again, that the, the commodities are being put up as collateral now this paper goes on to mostly talk about things on the financial side uh, i'm not gonna talk about the financial side i'm gonna spit and what i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna be spitballing a little bit here i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna plant a seed in your guys's brain to think about you guys take the idea run with it what i want to talk about is more on the side of the actual delivery of the materials themselves now i'm sure on the financial side uh, Posar is correct. I found this interesting. One of China's largest banks fails to pay margin call after today's monster nickel squeeze. We talked uh, briefly, briefly about the nickel squeeze yesterday. Here's the, from the article. One of China's big four banks was given additional time by the London Metals Exchange to pay hundreds of millions of dollars of margin calls. It missed Monday amid an unprecedented spike in nickel prices. And again, what Posar is talking about here is basically the the shock that's being caused by these sanctions and the ability of people to uh, pay their debts, basically. This is really much how I understand it. But again, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about actual delivery of the materials themselves. Because we're seeing uh, Joe Biden today for the, for the U.S. Put, um, put a ban on the import of Russian oil. And I believe that Russia has responded with its own export bans, though I don't know what um, what their what their uh, what specific materials they're pertaining to. Uh, but and then one of the I, I didn't talk about it. I should have pulled up the freaking article. I didn't think about it. Uh, the largest um, producer of nickel in the world is located in Russia as well. I thought that was um, important. So what I'm well, I'm a spitball here and the issue that might be arising if Russia and Ukraine are large material exporters and we're going to focus on Russia here more than Ukraine if these are large material exporters and sanctions are being placed either from within or from outside of Russia on the ability to transport these materials how are people going to source those materials? So there's two questions. And I think what Posar is getting at is more on the side of, well, I mean, I got nickel. I got some nickel that's supposed to be coming out of Russia. I can't get it no more. And I owe a bunch of people freaking money. And I can't move this nickel around. I got to go somewhere else to, 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 to source it. Now, again, what I want to look at is, you know, not the financial side. I can't pay because I'm not getting my nickel delivery. I'm looking at more at getting the delivery itself. Like not being able to produce and manufacture stuff and what that does to the price of commodities. Because I suspect that the sanctions or fear of further sanctions is sending industries on a mad scramble to source other materials. And this is going to create a stress on the system. And again, if, if commodities are being used they're being rehypothecated. So we got one pile of copper and we got five people, five factories claiming that it's there. We got five factories and 10 banks, 15 insurance companies all claiming they own one pile of copper. Not everybody's going to be able to get it. Not everybody's going to be able to get it. Who doesn't get 
their supply. And I think this is some of what's going on. This is a tweet here from Javier Blas. Uh, he's an energy and commodities columnist at Bloomberg. Once again, this is not, you know, this 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 ain't the tinfoil hat alien conspiracy crap that you know I'd be following. This is this is legit mainstream stuff. All right. The London Metal Exchange has introduced emergency measures in the aluminum, cobalt, lead, nickel, tin, and zinc markets. Among them, the LME has set limits on the nearest term spread and allowances for holders of some short positions to avoid delivery to avoid delivery of metal. Avoid delivery of metal. That's important. And I bet it's because you don't have the metal. Keep in mind, London Metal Exchange last year, they shut down copper trading because they ran out of freaking copper they were running low notice they also mentioned aluminum uh fears of an aluminum shortage have been talked about here for quite a while so they don't have enough there ain't enough to go around there ain't enough to go around what's that gonna do to prices probably shoot the mugs to the freaking moon i i shouldn't even say probably we know what's happening because we see it with wheat we see it with with nickel right now shooting those prices to the moon it's gonna it, it's gonna hit all your manufactured goods and this affects silver because as you guys know hopefully you can see this up here uh upper right corner uh paper to silver ratio 364 contracts out there for every one ounce of um of silver that's out there uh, now, keep in mind the number of paper silver ounces traded on the major world silver exchanges divided by the actual world production of silver. So this is based on the, uh, I suspect, uh, yearly production of silver. That doesn't pertain uh, the total amount of silver that's that's out there. Now, there's only about three, as of 2019, three and a half billion ounces of monetary silver that's, that's coins and bars out there. The rest of it gets consumed um, in industry. So, and, and keep in, also keep in mind, oh, I didn't, I forgot to click that part. Oops, my bad, right here. This is from Investopedia as well. Fourth largest silver producing nation in the world is Russia. Russia, twice as large as the United States, produced the fourth largest amount of silver in 2019. Russia's silver production remained stable from 2018 to 2019, producing 2,000 metric tons in 2019. The total silver deposits of Russia are estimated at 45,000 metric tons. So if people need a source, if this is happening right here, LME is shutting down trading on aluminum, cobalt, lead, nickel, and a lot of this crap is coming out of Russia. <coughs> Excuse me. What happens to these 364 <laughs> extra contracts? I think, you, and if these, if this is the way I understand it, each one of these contracts represents 5,000 ounces. Let's do some quick. So there's, there's an extra let's just let's just assume let's assume a lot of things let's assume this pertains to total supply out there 364 just for sake of argument four times bro there's about these foods about a million uh damn near two million ounces short one one million eight hundred twenty thousand ounces that's damn near two million ounces short two million ounces short somebody ain't getting their stuff Once again, recap. There's a great likelihood that uh, the world's resources are rehypothecated. Matter of fact, it's probably damn near certain. I should have, I forgot to pull this up too. I should have pulled up um, Visual Capitalist has a great, um, uh, some great graphics on the derivatives market. Um, derivatives, the estimated dollar value of the derivatives market on the upper end is four quadrillion or is it or one quadrillion because quad is four maybe it's four quadrillions i have no clue i don't even know how that's mathematically possible but it's a lot and it's pretty it's pretty again i think it's safe for us to assume that uh copper lead zinc silver gold all that has been rehypothecated they're up in there they're, they're part of those contracts which can't be covered. And if Russia's shutting down, they're not exporting this crap. People got to sort it from somewhere. Which sounds to me like you could have a run on commodities. And that's probably what we saw. Or 
and I don't know if this is going to continue. I don't know. I, I, I didn't uh, look at the news so much today yet, but we know this at least happened yesterday and it's in a serious, and you know what? It's probably safe to assume that we haven't even begun to see the, the long run effects of this, that we're just, we're just in the beginning. Cause look, these fools can't pay. I don't even know if they paid yet. Who is this? Who is this? Uh, Peabody, a unit of China Construction Bank Corps. I don't even know if they paid. This was this was from Monday. This was Tuesday. It was yesterday. These fools still got what they got. Additional time? How, many, how much additional time? Another week? These fools can't pay. We're just in the beginning. So yeah, basically, again, let me recap my recap. <laughs> what happens when the world runs on commodities and what happens... If they figure out there's more IOUs than there are commodities to cover it. So just a little just a little spitball there, putting it there for you guys to ponder. So that's it for today. Hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you can incorporate this into your own analysis. Until tomorrow, peace out.